Hello there, Jose Rodriguez back again. In this video, we're gonna cover and talk a little bit about inks. What are your options for OEM as well as third-party inks? Now, the way I decide whether I use OEM or third-party is this way. If I'm gonna sell something to someone, I either want OEM inks or proven third-party inks. By proven, I mean inks that have been tested either by individuals under adverse conditions as I have done as well. There are many choices one can buy from manufacturers, one can buy from companies such as photographic companies that sell inkjet material, one can order from third-party providers. A lot of these third-party providers also sell OEM inks as well. My way of approaching this is I hit eBay. I hit it as much as and as often as I can. But I also have favorite companies that I tend to stick with because of their track record and their support. So let's begin with, say, OEM inks. And I'm going to talk about one really terrific example of how you can actually work with OEM inks and pay minimum price. The Epson R2000 is an unusual printer that has caught the attention of the direct-to-garment industry. They have purchased hundreds of these printers. They have collected set after set after set of the inks that the printers came with and are selling them off on eBay. Now initially when this revolution began they were being sold for as low as eight to about an average of about fifteen dollars for a full set. Now they're a little bit higher. They start off around twenty four dollars for a full set and this is an example of what I'm talking about. These are actual T-159s they're for the Epson R2000, and they're the real deal. I have about 20 sets of these. Now, you could, of course, use third-party cartridges, which then you can refill with whatever ink you desire. And here's an example of those. Now, these are a little bit uh, different than the auto-reset chips that we are all used to. These need to be reset by shorting out two little brass contact points here and you simply either use a screwdriver just touch across both of those little terminals for about three four seconds you can use a paper clip bend it so that you have two ends as long as you're just shorting out those two little contacts you will reset the chip at any time now there is a battery that lives inside here it's a readily available battery you can buy them in packs of 10 from amazon over here we have another variety of cart, happens to be also for the R2000. I love my R R2000 by the way. These have a push button reset. Basically it's the same thing as shorting out by hand. The shorting out takes place internally. When you push that button, it shorts out the terminal, resets it for you. And again, you can refill them with whatever ink you desire. All right, now you can go for printers that are not that important, say printers that you're just simply using for document printing, I just buy the cheapest stuff I could possibly buy. This is uh, cards for a Epson R340. I just, I just clearly use this for document printing. I'm reviving one of them. See, this one here is, is sitting in my wife's office. I'm reviving one of them that I'm doing that, that seven episode series that printer i found literally at a at a flea market it, nobody wanted it it was full of bugs inside it was in such bad shape it was just just pitiful they were going to toss it out at the end of the day i bought it for nothing they gave it to me and i brought it back to life to the point where it's printing beautiful prints and these are the carts that you can get for them they, they run something like 14 dollars for two full sets it's amazing on ebay all right here we have, again, very cheap carts. These are for the R1400. Here I have carts for the R2880. And they are filled with OEM inks. You could use image specialist inks. You can use whatever ink. Most of the, most of the companies that sell top quality ink in the United States, their source is image specialist. Most of them. Now, Epson carts for the R3800 and the 3880. As you know, I modify these and I refill them with OEM ink. Where do I get that ink? From eBay. Large carts such as these sell 
for much lower than you would pay retail. If you just get them where they're say a year or two after uh, expiration. There's no problem with that ink, believe me. Trust me on that. Vivid Magenta for $28.80. This ran me something like $12 for 110 ml. This one was a bit more, about $22. Yes, you can buy cheaper ink if you go with third party suppliers, but that Magenta ink sold by all of these other companies does not come close to the gloss that this ink provides. If you print anything with third party inks, say for example the K3 ink set, anything that has magenta in it, reds, oranges, purples, you know, deep blues that have some magenta, anything that will, will have that magenta ink will look matte, especially on glossy paper or luster paper. Now if you use real honest to goodness OEM inks, which you can get in this manner, very cheaply you will not suffer that problem usually what I do is I actually create hybrid sets sometimes I will get a image specialist ink set K3 do not order the magentas and I'll replace them with OEM magenta now yes let me let me explain a little bit ink sets are pretty well matched every color works in tandem they're almost calibrated to a point all right it's like an orchestra with 30 musicians that are really used to playing with each other you introduce a new set of violin players it just will not sound the same the same thing with ink if i replace say for instance image specialist k3 ink set if i replace their magenta with oem magenta i may have to reprofile but then i will not have that gloss problem all right so that's that's one one way to beat that. Now, let me talk about a little bit about precision colors. Here they are. These are inks for I think it was the oh yeah, the R1900, R2000. This orange and yellow. That's how I can tell. Now, do they suffer from gloss? Yes, absolutely. Even with their their gloss optimizer. So again, I wish I could find something for the R1900, but the only available cheap option as far as OEM goes is for the R2000. For all of you that own that printer, hit eBay right now. Look on eBay, just hit R2000 Inc. and you will find these bargains. All right, let's look at the Canon Pro 100. Now, recently, the Pro 100 was found to have some problems with magenta. And it's not the printer, it was not the ink itself, but the fact that the biocide that it contained uh, lost its activity after sitting for various months. You know, say you bought four ounces and it took you three quarters of a year to use it up. Well, the constant insertion of needles and aspirating into syringes you know, inserting into carts and then, you know, washing the syringes out in tap water and so on and so on. You could be contaminating that original source. And the best way to contaminate ink is to introduce fungal spores. And that's the most prevalent contaminant in the face of the earth. So it's very common for ink, not just magenta. In this case, it happened to be the magenta which had a uh, biocide that just did not have the strength of the other colors, apparently. And just, you know, take my word just as my word. Um, so this caused precision colors to look for another source of magenta ink for the Pro 100. And once that source was found and tested out, the replacement was made. And so if you buy inks from precision colors now for the Pro 100, it will contain the new ink set. Of course, you can retrofit those two particular ink colors back with anything you may have already had you know you need to just get rid of the magentas you have left over and substitute them for the new the new formulation now like I was explaining earlier once you do that you change the properties a little bit so the black the photo black was also changed how that relates hey that is color theory working for you all right now the yellow the yellow the famous yellow CLI 42 cart 
OEM inks once you're finished and you refill them with Image Specialist or any other ink that's out there for the Pro 100, you could develop a gelling problem, meaning a thickening of the ink when old remaining OEM ink touches the new Image Specialist or any other ink. And that gelling could possibly pass through the exit port and hit your yellow channel on your printhead and basically clog it. Now, if you catch it just as it happens, you could dissolve that with Windex, with a soak in Windex. But if you continue printing, you know, without noticing, you will burn out that channel on that head and you'll have to replace it. Now, what the Precision Colors Company rep, um, recommends is that you buy a flushed cart, throw away the original, after you've removed the chip, of course, and take, for example, a CLI 8, just swap the chip and fill it with yellow ink, mark it as yellow, and use that, and you will never have that problem. The problem only occurs when you mix the two inks together, okay? So that's, that's that. Now, Germany has a uh, well-known company called OCP. They make inks really for the mass market of um, the, these, these businesses that you see sometimes at malls that refill cartridges for you. O OCP is the provider of those inks. They also have pigmented based inks. This is part of the K3 system and I buy it in uh, bottles of 16 ounce because for my printer that I'm using just for matte, I use OCP. I don't, I don't worry about gloss, I'm only using it for matte. So this actually cost me, it's ridiculous, maybe if this is um, 16 ounces, cost me something in the neighborhood of about $15 each bottle. They differ in price a little bit each color, but I got the whole set for something like 90 bucks, including shipping, from Arja Tech. Give them a call and ask them about their uh, K3 ink set. Again, like I said, if you're only going to do matte printing, wonderful, wonderful ink set. In fact, that's what I use for printing on my Canson watercolor papers. Let me quickly show you just a very quick example of some real, you know, just quickie prints that I've done with, I believe it was the 1400 with Chinese inks. I keep them sitting around in my print room, my shop, and as you can see, they're doing quite well. I haven't seen any fading. Of course, I know if I put these out in the sunny window, they'll fade. But this gives you an idea. Now, of course, now here are two ink sets. Look at the difference. You should be able to see the, the difference between these two. Look at the saturation on this print. And this is all from cheap Chinese ink, as is this one. Different kinds of paper. Just, you know, this is my little grandson when he was much younger. At any rate, so the point of this was to show you that there are many options and I'll give you the companies that I that I tend to associate with. Of course, Precision Colors. Talk to Mike. Great guy, top service, number one. You got inkjet carts. Again, very good ink. Top service, also number one. Arjet Tech. Sometimes you have to call them and actually, um, you know, discuss things with them. Now, I don't have it here, but I have Gloss Optimizer for the R1900, R2000 from OCP. It is superior to anything I've ever used. Okay, so if you're thinking about doing a um, third-party ink set for the R1900 or R2000, just omit, omit that particular Gloss Optimizer and talk to RJet Tech and see if they can uh, sell you a reasonable volume. The last time I did that, they wanted me to buy something like 25 gallons. Sorry, I don't have that kind of capacity need. All right. So another thing that I do, 
before I go I'll just give you a little update when I refill these carts for example these refillable carts this is for the 2880 so I'm going to be using Fifth Magenta well I get it from these carts I aspirate what I need to refill one of these little two ounce bottles unplug the fill plug insert the ink plug it back up I'm done so this is very convenient this will actually prevent a lot of the contamination problems these little tips will keep most contaminants out of the ink that you have in the bottle what you don't want to have to do is continue reinserting dirty needles they're dirty whether you wash them or not they're dirty you don't want to do that okay all right so I'm gonna leave you with a little tease I went to AC Moore today went to their bargain table and I found skills Strathmore watercolor paper basically it's probably pretty much the same thing as the Canson this is 9 by 12 140 pound 300 GMS and from what it appears it seems to have the same surface so I'm going to go ahead and run a little video that I will be posting in the next day or so and I'll take you through the steps of how to print to this I'll show you I mean step by step me talking about it is one thing but seeing it is something different all right so this uh, is the end of this video if you found the information useful please like it please subscribe as always share if you feel like it if you have any questions at the bottom of the post you'll see the uh, area to ask questions and as always happy printing bye bye